You're listening to Fresh Waves. I'm your host, Bren Masson. Now let's get back to the interview with Dr. Megan Lynch. I guess we better talk about snow shoveling because we are having some snow coming and this is winter in Canada, winter in Ontario, and we have two conditions, snow or ice, and uh, we're going to head into some more snow. So people will be shoveling. And normally when we get a snowfall here, it's not like in the Arctic where it's minus 40 and it's snowing. It usually warms up a little bit in order to bring in the weather that causes the snow. And then you're dealing with a heavy wet snow. snow. Yeah. So how are we shoveling? We're not supposed to do the um, sort of old classic dig, twist, toss. Egg. It's the twist and toss that kills us, isn't it? Yes, you're exactly okay. right. So no twist and toss. So how no do we get rid of snow in our driveway? <laughs> Heat it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a crazy laughs> <impress> go. <laughs> then go back and watch TV and do some core exercises. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, you want to pick the right shovel, first of all. So okay. you want a shovel that, um, you know, the snow will slide off of. So, okay, that's a good point. you know, pick something. You can um, you pick a plastic shovel that has that, like, slip slippery um, coating on it, or if you um, have a metal shovel, then make sure that sometimes you may even spray it down so that oh, that's a good idea. it's yeah, a great idea. Yeah, yeah. So that it, the snow does slide off of it more easily. There's nothing worse than doing all the work of picking up the snow and then you have to like shake the shovel off to actually get the <laughs> snow off of there. So make sure you pick the right shovel. Right. Um, you want to no. pick a shovel that's um, not enormous, but just fairly see. big so that you can push more, um, and try to do as much pushing first in, and in, instead of throwing as far. So if you can push, I realize some of the, um, shoveling that we have to do, especially in town, we don't have a whole lot of room to put the snow. Luckily this winter, we haven't had a whole lot of accumulation. So hopefully you don't have to yes. lift it too high. Right. But sometimes that becomes a problem. Yeah. When the snow banks are waist height or higher, mm-hmm. that's a big toss. It's a big lift. It is, yeah. yeah. It is. So you want to try to push forward as much as you can and then line up to where you're going to throw it to so that you're not tossing it back over your, over your shoulder or even tossing it out to the corner because um, the discs in our spine that provide the cushioning between the vertebrae, they're really susceptible to a bend and twist okay. motion. So in that motion, um, they really weaken. So a disc um, herniation or a disc bulge is not something that I would wish on any anyone. And um, that position of bending forward to shovel and then twisting to throw it is really a dangerous one for those um, for those discs in your spine. So you want to push forward and try to try to throw forward into the forward. into the pile. So move your body mm-hmm. instead of just twisting and throwing in a different direction. Also, pace pace yourself with the snowfall. So if you know that it's going to be, if you have the privilege of being around during the day or during the, the evening or whenever yeah. it is it's snowing, try to go out there a few times instead of waiting till we have 10 centimeters of heavy snow and doing it all at once because then every shovelful is really heavy. That's good advice. Very good advice. Yeah. Well, I went out to try and find a shovel for the cottage to shovel off the lake to go skating. Mm. So I thought the bigger the better, away we go. Until you get there and even pushing it, it was nice and wide, about four feet wide, but I couldn't even push it. Yeah. <laughs> it's too heavy. There's Especially on the lake. It's a long going. way you're, you're going. Like pushing. It is definitely. It's yeah, not sure. yeah. going anywhere. That's... And of course, the more you push into the snow, the more you get on the shovel. Yeah. So I went back and swapped it for a more reasonable shovel. Yes. I have Hard to thinking. do more rows, but it actually gets done. Yes. Yes. Or you could set up like they do at the hockey games where you... Get all, get your kids out there all lined up behind you like a snow plow. So everybody's taking a little bit. You get the whole rink done. (laughs) Well, it does have to be a family affair when you're shoveling off the lake, but. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Luckily at the lake, you don't really have to throw it. You can just shovel along. Just soup it away. Yeah. So at how, at home, you're not really supposed to shovel it straight out into the street. So you shovel across your driveway in a straight line. Yes. Yes. 
which is which is usually better for your body too because you're doing a shorter length so right. you're like likely not lifting as much weight if you think about the the weight of a typical snowfall when right. we get you know kind of that dense snow every shovelful could be 5 to 7 pounds of snow so and if you think that you're doing over that over ah. hundreds of times yeah. for one driveway that's a lot yeah and then if you get snow you know more than a day more than a day in a row, you know, it's no wonder that we're feeling it. If we said, oh, let's go to the gym and we'll work the exact same muscles 200 times with, you know, an eight pound weight. Nobody would ever you do wouldn't it. do it, right? Nobody would ever do it. Yeah. So say you do feel it the next day. You mm -hmm. wake up, you've shoveled the driveway, you've done everything that you were supposed to, but you're still feeling stiff. You've got sore muscles from doing that whole driveway. What is the philosophy? Are you supposed to... Uh, a little bit of the hair of the dog that bit you, go out and shovel some more, or do you take it easy for that day? What are you supposed to be doing to make yourself feel a little bit better? Yeah, so that next day, if you can avoid shoveling, I wouldn't rec I wouldn't recommend doing the same motions because then you're using the exact same muscles in the same way. Okay. I would get your body moving. So if you could go for a walk, if you could um, do something that you enjoy, because when our muscles are tense and sore, they usually have a buildup of lactic acid in them, which is kind of the byproduct of muscles working hard. And when we use our muscles, so if we do a little bit of kind of cardiovascular training, whether it be a brisk walk or a skate or whatever you choose to do, we're actually helping to increase circulation and flush out that lactic acid. So sometimes that is really the best thing that you can do. Some stretching for the muscles. So if your back is sore, a lot of times it will feel good to lie on your back and just hug your knees in towards your chest. And you can kind of rock it. them side to side a little bit or take yeah. your knees in little circles. So that often helps. If it's your shoulders, because they get a good workout shoveling, mm -hmm. even taking your arms and swinging, swinging them. So a motion like you're doing front crawl and then turn it around like you're doing back crawl. So just getting your arms moving through through the motion will often help kind of flush out that tension that's there. Mm -hmm. That's good advice. Mm -hmm. But if you have something that's still lingering after three days, you probably want to look into getting it checked out. Yeah. Normally, if it's just the muscles are overworked and tired, they will come around within within that time period. Mm -hmm. But if you're having... Like stiff muscles shouldn't last more than a couple of days, should they? No. No, if it's just a stiff muscle, it shouldn't last more than a few days. If you've torn a muscle, if you've irritated a joint, in sprained a joint, um, then that's when the pain is lasting more, more than that three-day mark. Right. Okay. So that's a good point to kind of stop and investigate things a little bit more so you know yeah. all right so we've been we know that we're going to have to shovel snow yes. I mean, unless we can afford to pay somebody to do it or unless some little kid comes running down the street offering to do your driveway which they don't seem to do very much anymore no I it doesn't add. happen yeah. <laughs> um i used to do it all the time when i was a kid we had a war to see who would get to shovel the driveway first because you get a dollar for it or whatever, mm -hmm. and that meant a lot to us. But it doesn't seem like that happens anymore. But what can we do to get ourselves in shape to handle the snowing, snow shoveling that we know we're going to have to do? I mean, it's it's just a fact of life. So other people who do serious downhill skiing, they train, train. pre-season to get ready for it. People who do running, they train. You can't just go and run a marathon. You train to run that marathon. So we know we have to shovel snow. What can we do to train to get ready for snow shoveling season? Well, we want to look at it as a sport or activity. So before you would you know, go out for sport or activity, you would make sure that you have, that you're fueled up. So okay. make sure that you are hydrated. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be out there even, even when it's cold, you're going to be sweating. You're going to be expending energy. You're going to need, um, your hot muscles. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. Hot chocolate water. Okay. Yeah. Maybe hot <laughs> So you, you want to be hydrated before you go out. You want to have something, um, to eat that's going to give you some energy for the strength 
um, work that you're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. So that, that's some prep ahead of time. Right. We already talked about um, choosing the shovel and kind of your technique of doing it. Should you stretch before you do it? Maybe? Yeah, it's good to do. I, um, it's been shown that our bodies like to have a dynamic warm up before we get into some activity. So what is the dynamic warm up? It means, um, a warm up in motion. So instead okay. of sitting on the floor and trying to touch our toes and <laughs> doing those stretches where we're in one position, and they make you feel really, really, really bad when yeah. you can't get Because you can't reach yeah. them can that, yeah. anymore. <laughs> Maybe to my knees. The demoralizing <laughs> kind of stretches. <laughs> yeah, just don't do those. They're too depressing. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you want to get your body warmed up the big joints um, because that will help get your circulation moving. So we talked about the front crawl, back crawl arms. Right. So you could do those. So those are the shoulder big joints. The big shoulder joints. You can um, march on the spot, lifting your knees up really high. So okay. just like a minute or two of high knee marches. Yeah, that, I see the hockey players do that before yeah, a game. Yeah, they've really started to come into that dynamic muscle um, work before we really need to use our muscles. Because it helps increase the circulation, warms the muscles up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we just stretch a cold muscle, it doesn't like that very much and it actually... Can uh, hurt it, right? it. It can hurt it, and the and the muscle sometimes will not have the same elasticity. Whereas if you okay. put it through its range of motion, it actually will be more limber for you. Okay, I've heard the analogy of if you take a dry sponge and try to stretch it, you break it. Mm -hmm. But if you get it wet first and warm, then it'll stretch a lot more easily and come back. I've to heard where... of that too. Yeah. Oh, I like that analogy. Isn't that a good analogy? Because yeah. yeah. then I'm you can kind that. of visualize the muscle being that sponge and. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Okay. So some arm circles, some knee lifts, um, and you can do some side to side bends of your torso. So standing up, sliding one hand down your leg and then sliding over to the other side. Yeah, because when you think about it, the odd thing about shoveling snow is many times you need to get the car out in the morning. You just get out of bed. You've had that nice sleep. Your your mm -hmm. muscles are in sleep mode, and I don't know about you, but half of the time it takes my body a little while to catch up with my brain. Yes, <laughs> my brain's very much awake, and the rest I can't even do up my buttons because my hands are like really. I really want to be asleep. <laughs> so to just jump out of your warm bed into some boots and a coat and go out to shovel the snow, you may need to warm up your yes. body a bit first, Makes sense, right? Yeah. yeah, just like your car doesn't like it when you just jump in and go, yeah. your body's the same way. So um, one thing, first thing in the morning, if you're jumping out to go shoveling, definitely don't do those touch your toe moves or, you know, um, big bending motions yeah. because we talked about the discs in your spine and how mm -hmm. they don't like to be in a bend and twist motion. But overnight, the discs um, fill up with more fluid. So we're actually taller in the morning. Oh. That's the good news. Yeah. Ooh, if you're like going to measure that. yourself, go first thing in the morning. <laughs> okay. um, but they're also a lot more rigid and uh, they um, have a higher propensity for injury first thing in the morning. Oh. So if all of a sudden you pop out of bed and then you go out and you know, bend and lift something, bend and twist and throw your shovel full of snow. It, 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 you're worse off than if you did that same motion later on in the day. Okay. So There's I'm not saying just so many people work out first thing in the morning. Isn't that funny? Yeah. So you just want to be careful of doing compression exercises, exercises. first thing in the morning, especially okay. if you have a history of back Problems. problems. Mm -hmm. And similarly, in the evening when you get home from work and the driveway needs to be done, you've been sitting in the car for your drive home, which is, yes. you really can't and shouldn't exercise while you're in the car. No, not a good idea. Leg lifts <laughs> and, yeah. you know, stretching. It's not good. You're supposed to be concentrating yeah. on exercise the road. Exercise your eyes. Yeah, keep your yes. eyes on the road. Yes. Right. Well, there's one exercise I give my clients all the time in, in the car. This, okay. This is a posture exercise. So, Every red light, every stop sign, if everyone could tuck their chin in, just like you're making a double chin, mm -hmm. it's not the most attractive yeah. look if your car next door is But you don't know the car next anything. door, so just no, don't worry except about Except in Stouffville. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to pull your chin in, push into your back your headrest for five seconds. That's a great oh, nice. car stretch. That's a great idea, yeah. Because 
a lot of us who sit at a desk all day, yeah, right. our chins tend to creep forward as yeah. we're really concentrating on the screen. Yeah. yeah. So that's a great car exercise. But no squats or lunges or leg mm-hmm. lifts, I don't think. No. Your leg should be down by the pedals, not up by your ears. Okay, so you get out of the car and now you've got a shovel. So again, so you should I would do, do a those bit same of warming up. Yeah, I would do those same motions: the arm circles, leg lifts. Um, you could do a few um, squats. So that's something that um, is another great exercise for core strength. So going from standing up tall, your feet are hip width apart. And you want to push your bottom back. Like you're going to sit down. Like you're going to sit down. So you could pretend that you're sitting back um, onto a stool. And then stand right back up tall again till your hips are right underneath you. And then you go again. Do you hold the squat for any length of time or it's more just the getting yeah, up you and wanna, getting down? You can do... I would recommend that you start off with a slow motion. So go down <laughs> slowly, come up slowly because then you're feeling the muscles mm-hmm. and you know if those abdominal muscles are still braced right. or you know if you've lost it um, because if you can hold that brace while you do your squat then that's the perfect position I often tell people start off with that squat um, at the edge of your couch so if you um, have your back facing the side arm of the couch and you want to squat back until you just glaze the armrest and then mm-hmm. come back up that's a good depth to start off at to start off and then you build it up and as you get better you can go deeper into it okay well we're going to take a break and when we get back we'll continue our conversation wrap it up with some more tips you're listening to fresh we're talking with dr megan lynch and we'll be back right after this claudio here with knowledgeflow.ca if your family has been the victim of cybercrime, cyberbullying, or malicious privacy abuses, you're not alone. It's happening every day and sometimes scares tragic consequences, as we've seen in recent news. What's the solution? Don't internalize it. If it's an urgent issue, call the police immediately. If, however, you would like professional advice, you can confidentially email report at knowledgeflow.ca and get some ideas for dealing with social media, instant messaging, webcams, hacking, identity breaches, etc. Remember to visit knowledgeflow.ca on Facebook and potentially arrange a seminar for your community center, your school, or your board of education. Do you find that mainstream FM radio plays the same classic rock songs over and over, and rarely, with the exception of specialty programs, play backtracks or B-sides from your favorite albums? I hope you can join me, Chuck Roberts, on Friday nights at 9 p.m. for my one-hour show, Classic Backtracks. We'll explore the backtracks or B-sides from classic rock artists from the 60s through the 90s, and play the songs that you don't usually hear on mainstream radio. And hopefully we'll play a hidden gem that brings back some fond musical memories. During my show, I also profile a Canadian rock artist in my Coast to Coast segment, and each week close the program, profiling a classic rock artist's contribution to rock music from bands to solo efforts or collaborations. That's Classic Backtracks on Friday nights at 9 p.m. We're wrapping up a great hour of conversation with Dr. Megan Lynch of the Stovall Natural Health Clinic. It's so important at this time of the year to be prepared in all kinds of ways. If we're walking, if we're shoveling snow, no matter what we do to be dressed properly, one of the things that seem to always be hurting us in the wintertime is your neck. And it's not because you're shoveling snow with your head (laughs) or putting it with your face. It's because you're cold and you're tensing up, right? Yeah, I've... um... You really see this a lot in the wintertime. Um, you know, sometimes it's uh, from being outside, but sometimes it's also in offices where, you know, you don't always know what the temperature is going to be like yes, in the wintertime. Yes, and offices time, are right? designed for men who are wearing an undershirt, a dress shirt, and a suit jacket. And lots of times, women especially, are not. Yeah, so you We're really... wearing a nice blouse and that's it. Yeah, and you that's want to yeah. make sure that you have, you know, maybe stash a... A, sweater. an extra layer at at the office because we often see you you may not even notice it but your shoulders are hunched up right at your ear lobes and those muscles that lift your shoulders up like that get really tense in these in this cold weather and those muscles are attached right in at the base of our skulls so 
um, you don't necessarily link that to having neck pain, headaches, um, and those type of symptoms, but often there is a correlation there between that hunched up shoulders and those headaches and, and neck problems. Mm -hmm. So try to be, try to be aware of that. And you know, whether it's wearing a nice warm scarf as you go out Mm -hmm. so you can keep yourself bundled up, um, and let your shoulders relax, you know, take the time to put your gloves on, put Mm -hmm. your hat on and Um, pay attention to yourself. Mm -hmm. Notice sometimes just shake it off a bit and see, Oh yeah. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> people yeah. will come in and I'll stand behind them and put my hands on their shoulders and say, oh, do you realize that those are way up there at your ears? No. And then all of a sudden I say, okay, just like let your shoulders drop down. Oh, oh. I didn't even know that they were there. <laughs> so sometimes it's something that we we are just doing subconsciously because we're feeling that chill and yeah. that's our body's reaction to it. But if your muscle stays contracted like that over such a long time, mm-hmm. then it can lead to a lot of other troubles. Yes. And as parents, I find that the kids are out playing and we're watching the kids. Mm-hmm. So it's not like we're out playing like a little kid rolling around in the snow. Staying but warm. we're standing there. And the parents I see that are watching their kids do skiing, downhill skiing, they're standing on the side of the hill, first of all, on an awkward angle for hours, hours. and hours and hours. That and they're cold yeah. and they're all hunched up and shaking. And even the shaking, I think your body has to be pretty tense for the, the shivering to be yeah, as intense a, as it gets sometimes. Yeah, you're exactly right. So, you know, take... Um, one thing that you can do is take your shoulders and pull them up as high as you can to your ears. Then you actually notice those muscles right. and then drop them down as far as they'll go. And you realize like, oh, my neck is actually a lot longer than I thought it was. Uh-huh. When you And a long leg- <laughs> neck is very attractive. So I've heard. Yeah. It gives you great posture. Yeah. And that always makes us look better, right? When yeah. We it's a difference between looking enough. like a princess and a turtle. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Another great analogy. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I, I see a Disney film in the making, The Princess and the Turtle. Oh, there you go. Good, good title. <laughs> Saved by the day by a chiropractor. Is that it? <laughs> but that shrugged shoulder, it's also a bit of an epidemic in our society because so many of us are on our phones, texting on electronics Mm. so much of the day too. So we're holding our arms up front. Those muscles are having to work. So it's not just the cold months that we have to think about it. Sometimes you need, yeah, check your positioning and really work on squeezing the bottom of your shoulder blades together. All of a sudden that will pull Hmm. your, your upper body into the right position. And stretch it out. And stretch it out. And then if, again, if too. something is going on more than, you know, that three, three day mark, get it checked out. You, yeah. you know, just. So how do people get a hold of you if they're looking to get some chiropractic care? Yeah. For more information, you um, can check out our clinic's website, which is um, www.stovillenhc.com. Dot com. Okay. That stands for Stovall Natural Health Clinic. Um, or you can give us a call at uh, 905-642-8555. Um, but we have lots of information soon to be coming. We're going to have um, a YouTube channel with some video links of exercises like the ones I'm trying to describe to mm-hmm. you today. So you'll That's be able great. to go to the website and then see those um, exercises. So it'll say exercises for snow shoveling, and then we'll have video um, clips so you can follow along instead of trying to decipher it by reading a description. It's it's much better if you have a, a little bit of a visual mm-hmm. aid to try and see yeah. what you're doing, especially in motion, so you yeah. know exactly how it's going. Definitely, that sounds yeah. great. Great idea. Well, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us today. It's thank always you. a pleasure to have you in the in the house. And if you ever think of something that we we need to be talking about, do let us know because uh, we need to be reminded constantly <sighs> of what we have to do to stay healthy. We do and, definitely, yeah, and not hurt ourselves and things like uh-huh. that, right, Jake? Yeah, that's thank right. Thank you, good, and good happy today. shoveling tomorrow. <laughs> been listening to Fresh Waves, a Whistle FM production. I'm your host, Brenda Masson, and our technical producer is Jason Rumball. Tune in every Wednesday at 10 a.m. for 
Fresh Waves here on Whistle FM, 102.9 on the FM dial and whistlefm.com anywhere in the world. Fresh Waves is available on podcast too. Just go to whistlefm.ca or freshwaves.ca. We podcast all of the Fresh Waves shows so that you can listen at your leisure. Fresh Waves, it really is 